Hi there, this is Ranjit and uh, welcome to the relaunch of Weekly Tech Report and Analysis. I used to do this in uh, 2012, uh, but got so busy that I stopped doing this. But uh, I got a lot of requests from you guys to do uh, news updates. I can't do it every day, but I thought, why not uh, do it on a weekly basis? What are the important tech news, not just smartphones, but general tech news and my analysis of it. So this is the first episode. Let's start it. And the biggest news uh, this week was with uh, uh, Computex uh, 2017, Intel actually announced a new lineup of, of their processor that is known as the Core i9. Uh, generally, Intel has the Core i3, i5 and the i7, but now they are bringing out a new range that is the Core i9. And I frankly uh, feel this one is sort of the Intel extreme processors that we found earlier. Those were six core and eight core processors for enthusiasts. And now Intel is coming up with this new core i9. And this one will have 10 to 18 cores. Yes, you heard it right, 18 cores. So 10 physical cores. So for uh, if you take into account hyper threading uh, for the base 10 uh, core one, it will be 20, uh, what do you say, multi-threaded cores. And for the high end uh, variant uh, that will be having 18 cores, it will be 36. So a uh, huge uh, leap and this will be great for people who are into video editing and require a lot of processing. Uh, so this is a very interesting take uh, by Intel. Uh, but again, these processors will be very expensive. Intel said that the base variant will start around the price of around uh, $999 just for the processor and the higher end uh, variant of these processors will cost as much as about 2000 US dollars. So uh, in the next couple of months, we can see some very high end, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, machines uh, ideal for workstations and video editing using the score i9 processors. Again, I'll have a link for Anand Tech in the YouTube show notes so that you can get more info on this one. Next, uh, let's move to the next, uh, uh, but before that, let's also talk about this. Uh, this, as you can see from this chart, uh, this is the uh, screenshot of the Intel Core X lineup of processor. And the first one, as you can see, is the Core i91, uh, having the model number, uh, 7900X and this is the 10 core uh, variant. Intel said that they will also be announcing 12 core, 14 core and the 18 core processors very soon. So let's move to the next story and this is uh, regarding the Bixby functionality on the Samsung Galaxy S8 and the S8 Plus. And if you have followed my review, I said that the Bixby functionality was sort of half big and we were expecting that the voice functionality would come to uh, the S8 and the S8 Plus using Bixby. And Samsung had promised earlier that it would come out in June, but now they have sort of delayed. Uh, as you can see, this report from Wall Street Journal says that this will be delayed. So hopefully by end of June, let's see if it comes out. But my question to you guys is that, do you really need Bixby voice assistant? Because frankly speaking, I feel the Google assistant does a far better job. But anyways, let's see if it comes to the Galaxy S8 and how well the voice functionality works. Now let's move to the next story. This is about smartphones. And this is a new smartphone that was announced by Andy Rubin, known as the Essential Phone. And why it's a big deal? Uh, the thing is that Andy Rubin is sort of the what do you say father of android and uh, so it's he's a big deal he used to work with google earlier google uh, even before google actually uh, acquired android it was made and uh, andy rubin was one of the founders of that so now uh, he is coming up with this new smartphone uh, that is known as the essential uh, smartphone and according to the specs the biggest deal about this smartphone is the build quality it's not made up of aluminium and other stuff it will be made of uh, a combination of titanium and ceramic so in terms of uh, what do you say uh, the looks it looks spectacular and they say that this will be actually a very durable smartphone uh, and if the phone falls also down it won't get dents and scratches like we get on the other metallic phones uh, and moving to the other specs that it has again it's almost bezel-less display that it is having like the galaxy s8 and uh, the standard specs that we are going to see for high-end smartphones like the snapdragon 835 chipset with 4 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage. Apart from that, this will also have a dual camera setup, uh, just like the Huawei P9, uh, rare dual uh, functional camera. One is a regular one and another is a monochrome. And they say that uh, using this combination of this, they can get much more vibrant and brighter pictures even in low lighting conditions. So that is one the thing that is interesting. And uh, 
regarding uh, what you say the pricing in us this is priced in us for 699 us dollars as of now regarding other countries like india and stuff we don't know when it's going to come but uh, feels like a refreshed uh, device uh, with excellent build quality and let's see what andy rubin does in terms of software optimization uh, they said that they'll try to keep it uh, close to very stock android experience uh, but again there might be some magic software magic that uh, will come by andy rubin so let's see i'm actually pretty excited about this essential uh, smartphone uh, so let's now move to the next news story and this is about an announcement uh, uh, the moto z2 play was uh, launched this is the successor to the moto z play that was launched last year regarding the specs again uh, it is having the snapdragon 626 soc not a huge upgrade from the snapdragon 625 and this one is going to have a 3000 milliamp hour battery so the battery capacity has actually reduced uh, if we compare it to the older Moto Z Play. So let's see uh, what, uh, but according to Motorola, they have sort of improved the camera performance on this one. So the rear facing camera is supposed to be a lot improved on this one. And regarding the pricing in US, this will start at uh, US $499. So if you convert that in Indian rupees, it's almost 32,000 rupees. So I'm just scratching my head. Uh, Snapdragon 626 device at around 32,000. Will it sell in India? There is an event by Motorola in India next week. So looks like they might be launching this device even in India. So let's see what would be the pricing. Again, uh, give your guess in the YouTube comment section below. So moving to the next, uh, what do you say, story. This is about uh, Qualcomm quick charging. Uh, if you recall with the Snapdragon 835 chipset, uh, Qualcomm had announced the quick charging 4 support but now they have come up with the quick charging 4 plus uh, this is a slight improvement to the Qualcomm quick charging 4 and according to Qualcomm uh, this is about 15% faster than Qualcomm quick charging 4 and also while charging the devices will heat up about 3 degrees less compared to the Qualcomm quick charging 4 and also they say that in terms of efficiency this is almost 30% more efficient as you can see from this uh, chart uh, they give this these are the three highlighting points but uh, it'll be interesting to see which devices implement this and my big question is will this qualcomm quick charging 4 plus be able to beat the one plus dash charging because frankly speaking guys still i feel the dash charging charges the quickest as of now so it'll be interesting to see if this quick charging 4 plus can beat the uh uh, dash charging that we find on the OnePlus and the OnePlus 5 is coming soon to India. So moving to the last story, this is sort of a gadget. Uh, again, if you uh, are an enthusiast and you have used high-end uh, Logitech MX mouses, uh, M, uh, the Logitech has now announced a new version of the MX uh, known as the MX Master 2S and uh, another portable variant uh, that is the MX Anywhere 2S. I actually personally use the MX Anywhere and uh, these are slight upgrades to the older version and these are pricey uh, mices they cost around 100 US dollars and in terms of sensitivity they have increased the sensitivity the earlier MX mouses had a sensitivity of 1600 dpi these will have uh, up to 4000 and these are user adjustable the, uh, the mouse sensitivity and apart from that they have a big uh, new feature which is known as the flow software if you have multiple computer setups you can use the single mouse and uh, why uh, and when you move from one screen to the other screen let's say you have two different computers uh, it will seamlessly translation to the other one so you can actually use two different devices with a single mouse so that that's the special thing about this uh, mouse i personally use the mx anywhere too i like the mouse uh, i don't know about the india pricing yet because they haven't announced the india pricing but uh, the good thing is that if it comes to india uh, the mx uh, anywhere uh, the, uh, the current version the price will fall down and uh, logitech has also said that the battery life is sort of improved on these MX uh, 2S uh, variants. For example, I personally use the MX Anywhere as I mentioned and uh, Logitech claims that it gets about 30 days of battery life but in my usage I just get about 14 to 15 days. On these new ones they are claiming about a battery life of about 60 to 70 days so hopefully it should give a battery life of about 30 days. So guys these were the quick uh, news updates uh, this week. Do let me know what do you think about this new show. Uh, would you like me to continue it? I I'm planning to uh, post the uh, these videos every saturday if i'm in town so do let me know and give your feedback in the youtube comment section below so guys if you're still not subscribed to my youtube channel uh, do subscribe and i hope to see you in my next video signing off for now